The library of modern space combat games isn't quite as boundless as the celestial backdrop upon which it is played out, but on the horizon looms Strike Suit Zero, looking to fill the void in an otherwise bleak abyss. UK-based indie developer Born Ready Games will hope that their first project can be the catalyst for a somewhat overdue resurgence in space combat, a genre that's fallen a little by the wayside in recent years. Freelancer, Free Space, Wing Commander, X-Wing vs TIE Fighter. The synonymous classics of space combat are all too familiar to the guys and girls at Born Ready. As fans of the genre, they say that there simply hasn't been enough quality to quench the thirst of spacefaring gamers for far too long. Step up, Strike Suit Zero. The galaxy is at war, and the United Nations of Earth are in an all-out battle to save our planet from its bleak fate. You assume the role of a disgraced UNE pilot simply known as Adams. After a quick tutorial, all is forgiven and you're reinstated with full rights. You're consequently introduced to an artificial intelligence named Control, who hopes to devise a weapon to turn the tides of war in your favour. The nature of the weapon? The titular strike suit, of course. The strike suit is the brainchild of renowned mecha designer Junji Okobo, and is a highly manoeuvrable fighter with the added ability to transform into a mech at the drop of a hat. Control then surmises that Adams, the previously outcast pilot, is the only man who can save the Earth from certain destruction. The narrative does a decent job of driving the action forward, but it's not going to win any awards. Thankfully, it's not the main draw here, and where a game like this is critically make or break is the gameplay, and Strike Suit Zero more than delivers in this regard. Strike Suit Zero's controls are pretty much what you'd expect for a game of its ilk. They'll get you through the game's 13 missions with no fuss for the most part, and this extends to the game's heads up display. A few clever design choices, primarily relating to the reticle and targeting system, ensure that taking down enemies is a thing of pure joy, and seeing as you'll be spending 99% of your time doing just that, Strike Suit Zero is simply a blast to play. Once you've got a target in your sights, you'll first want to deplete their shields with a machine gun, before finishing them off with a missile, an unrelenting stream of cannon fire, or a devastating combination of the two. A second floating reticle illustrates where you need to fire to hit a moving target, and it'll turn red once you've got a valid shot. This is particularly useful when you're using your cannon, as it removes that element of hit and hope common to many space combat games allowing you to really place your shots with precision. Defensively, not only is your ship fairly speedy and agile, but it's also equipped with EMP pulses, which act as a de facto substitute for flares, allowing you to shake off incoming missiles. You'll definitely want to keep an eye on your ship's health at all times, because the checkpoints in Strike Suit Zero can be brutally unforgiving. There are two health bars, the shield, which regenerates, and the armour, which doesn't. If your shield depletes, it's advisable to seek refuge from the battle for a few seconds or so and wait for it to regenerate. If your armour depletes, it's game over. Add to that the finite ammunition supplies of things like missiles, rockets and machine guns, and you're constantly weighing up and managing your resources, only lending to the frenetic and fast-paced nature of the on-screen action. Before you start a mission, you'll have the chance to customise your ship's weapon loadout, and as you progress through the game, you slowly unlock more weapons and weapon variants. What's more, by achieving in-game objectives, you'll be able to upgrade them. This keeps things fresh and gives the sense that you're becoming gradually more and more badass. The necessity to select your weapon loadout also adds a welcome layer of strategy to the otherwise mindless action. By taking out enemies, you'll build what's known as the Flux Bar. Flux is the energy that the Strike Suit absorbs from Fallen Craft, and uses to transform into its mecha configuration, officially Strike Mode. In this mode, your forward momentum ceases, and you become a lot more manoeuvrable and infinitely more powerful. Or so that's the idea. Unfortunately, while the onboard weapons do receive a noticeable boost in firepower, the controls for the Strike Suit are a little bit finicky at best. Luckily though, it's not a deal breaker. You'll still want to jump into strike mode at every given opportunity. Simply because firing off a barrage of missiles and unleashing explosive vengeance upon your intergalactic adversaries is easily one of the most satisfying things you can do in any video game to date. It's just a shame that the controls for the game's defining mechanic are somewhat poorly executed.
dark, desolate, and largely featureless. Breathing life and character into the great unknown is no mean feat, but Strike Suit Zero delivers with a plump. Skyboxes are genuinely breathtaking, delivering an almost ethereal experience with a very natural use of colour and lighting. The artistic deities at Born Ready have brought to fruition what is perhaps the most beautiful realisation of space in any video game ever committed to Pixel. Perfectly complementing the game's look is its sound design. Strike Suit Zero features a fantastic original score by famed homeworld composer Paul Ruskay, from pulsating frantic synths during the heat of battle to gentle, soothing soundscapes outside of it. Strike Suit Zero's soundtrack evokes a sense of beauty and wonderment and is set to live long in the memory. British game design, a Canadian composer, and an aesthetic that lends heavily from Japanese anime and mecha culture results in a game that is stylistically very East meets West. This amalgamation of styles gives Strike Suit Zero its own distinct feel, and sets it apart from space combat games past and present. But that's not to say it's perfect. Aside from the aforementioned control annoyances, the game has some serious issues with difficulty. Checkpoints are sparse and unforgiving, and you'll find yourself hugely outnumbered most of the time. A sense of challenge and consequent achievement is all well and good, but it would have been nice to have a difficulty setting for less experienced players too. The difficulty is artificially amplified by the rather dull and borderline useless friendly AI, and this is particularly noticeable during the escort and defence missions. Yes, there are escort missions in this game, and no, they are not fun here either. What's more, if you so much as scrape against an enemy frigate or cruiser, your shield and armour will deplete dramatically, as if you just ploughed into it head-on with the force of a thousand suns. But for all its shortcomings and niggly faults, Strike Suit Zero is simply too much fun to not recommend. As the first properly budgeted and properly realised space combat game in what seems like an age, Strike Suit Zero succeeds in its rebirth attempt by default. But it goes above and beyond that, delivering a wholly thrilling and captivating 10 hours of gameplay within an aesthetically awe-inspiring mise-en-scene. This is space combat done right. <laughs>